I am so glad you convinced me that the family car should be the Defender 110. It is so beautiful inside. It's so comfortable. And it just feels indestructible. Yes, it really is. I've been waiting a long time for the new model to come out. The Defender 110, I'm telling you, it's my favorite car of all times. It's my third one. You know, I have stories of going off road. The guy managed the group. He was like, what are you doing in this beautiful car? I'm like, I'm going off road. He's like, are you sure? Because you can use one of ours. And then they look like Mad Max cars. I'm like, no, 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 no. We're going to do this. And he was shocked. Wow. Well, it's great because the Defender has been reimagined for 21st century adventure and its unparalleled off-road ability as well as its robust interior are invaluable whether you're headed towards uncharted territory or just a weekend of exploration. The Defender 110 tackles challenging surroundings with absolute confidence. The SUV conveys strength outside and in, featuring peerless technology like an intuitive driver display and an award-winning infotainment system. That's my favorite part, to keep you connected no matter where the journey takes you. Adventure is unique to everyone, and so is the Defender. Choose from the two-door Defender 90, the four-door Defender 110, or the larger Defender 130 with the ability to seat up to eight passengers. You'll find uncompromising performance in all three. So pack up and go even further with the Defender 110. Learn more at LandRoverUSA.com forward slash Defender. Capella University is rethinking higher education. With its game-changing FlexPath learning format, you can earn your degree on your schedule and fit your education seamlessly into your life. Imagine your future differently at capella.edu. Every single day on my Twitter account, follow me at jaltacher. I'm doing the adult improvement tip of the day. As an adult, I've become a chess master, professional stand-up comedian, a computer programmer, an investor, a hedge fund manager, an entrepreneur. In some cases, I've mastered some of these new fields. It's no good to just do something mindlessly over and over and over again and not get better. You get happier when you improve. New research shows that adults can improve just as easily as kids or almost as easily. I've written books about adult improvement. I have new ideas that beat out the 10,000 hour rule. And I'm doing a whole thread every single day, one tip a day for the next 100 days, adult improvement tip of the day. Find me on Twitter at Jay Altucher. This isn't your average business podcast, and he's not your average host. This is I Will Make You a Millionaire, another episode helping someone reach their goal of making millions. So Paul is one of the people in the I Will Make You a Millionaire program, and he also just told me at one point held the Italian national record for the speed at which he saw Rubik's Cube. It was 12 seconds. Is the record still hold, or did someone beat your record? No, no, it's being beaten. This was like 10 years ago. What's the fastest in Italy? Oh, you know, I don't know now, but it must be under eight seconds for sure. Wow. Oh, my God. Is that because techniques have improved? You know, no, I don't think so. My understand, I, I'm not like on it anymore, like following things a lot, but I the methods are pretty much the same. So I suppose they're just people have been practicing more and kind of fine tuning the, the, the techniques. Are there trainers for this? Like so that maybe trainer training got has gotten better mm. like not that i know especially uh, i know that the best people are extremely young yeah. like early teens or you know teens and that's kind of the age i was uh, at train uh, like as well when i got the record maybe it was a bit older like 17 or something but uh, you know i would do it a lot right it's kind of when you're in school that you can spend all of your yeah. day in doing this kind of stuff. And that's where you get so much better when you're kind of so focused on only one thing, then you improve. Yeah. So, let, let, so let's see, you scrambled it while looking the other way. So we know you didn't scramble it. Yeah. yeah okay. Let me scramble more, you know, who, okay. the, there was no, you know, switch and stuff like that. Yeah. I actually had a friend who was a magician and used to do the blindfolded part as his trick. Uh -huh. And uh, he, he, you know, he clearly have a trick. But when you do a blindfolded, you're legitimately doing it blindfolded. Yeah, yeah, 100%. The yeah. thing is that for him, he could do it blindfolded as well. But he, he always told me when I'm like performing, I cannot afford to make mistakes. Yeah. 
right? So he had a trick basically, but, uh, but no, regularly you do things properly. I can actually yeah. explain how it works even to do it blindfolded, but uh, okay, I'll do this. Give me like a minute to have a look. In competition, you get, you get a minute to look? No, no, you get 15 seconds. Yeah, yeah, okay. minute was a fewer speech. Yeah, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll just start. I'm, I mean, wow. I mean, I'm no longer at my peak, so it's not like I feel too much pressure. Don't, don't feel any pressure. Solving it at all is incredible. Um, oh my gosh, that was good. How many seconds so, yeah. was that? Oh, I forgot to record the it was, was, it was less than a minute. I don't know. I guess must must have been between, I don't know, 18 seconds, something like that. So great. Did you learn by studying a book or did you figure out how to, how to uh, solve it? It's hard to figure out. Yeah, I, it's hard to figure out. Uh, for I found some sort of guide and I kind of went through it and got a little bit of an understanding. And then uh, I, re I started practicing a lot, like a whole lot. And uh, at some point, I realized that, uh, you know, the, um, the kind of competitive level in Italy, that if I practiced a little bit more, I could be the best in Italy. And so I went all in. Wow, that is really cool. Excellent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, it worked out uh, pretty good. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, definitely a good party trick. Yeah. So how are, how are things going now with all this stuff? What have you been thinking about? Yeah, so I've uh, been doing a bunch more uh, experiments. For the completely automated part, I have followed some of the advice that you gave last time and tried to decrease the number of comments, use it more kind of randomly towards the day and uh, adding like even larger delays. And it worked fine for like uh, seven or eight days, but then uh, I kind of got blocked again. Wow. When you say kind of, what does that mean? Yeah, it's a sort of, uh, let's say, minor block in the sense that it's the kind of block where you're, I'm required to reset my password. But it's not, but once I've done it, I can still uh, uh, use the account like normally. But what? it just tells me that they're realizing there's something um, like going on. So what do you think? I mean, if you were a human doing it, I mean, did you repeat comments? No. So you didn't repeat comments. Comments were not repeated. Yep. So I wonder what it noticed. I mean, I'm sure it's very good at detecting. But stuff. you know what I'm what I'm thinking? I was reading about uh, uh, a little bit of how um, the whole system of captchas, you know, to when they yeah. to tell people from computers, and it seems like the current versions uh, are kind of uh, so advanced that but basically the part that you're doing is not the test. That's just basically you training some, you know, yeah. driverless car. Uh, but it's uh, they track the mouse movements all towards your, uh, you know, browsing session. Ah, and so they can tell if if the mouse uh, is moving, you know, like a human or like a machine. I suppose that could be kind of simulated as well. But uh, but if you if you did it as a mobile app, though, there would be no mouse. Yeah, that's true. There would be only taps. So I wonder if you can, have you tried it, uh, the slower version on a mobile? I have not. The, the, the main thing is that the, the kind of uh, interface will be completely different. So there's a um, somewhat, yeah, it's, it's different to get the system going on a, a laptop or on a phone. Maybe it could be possible with an Android phone, I suppose. Not with an iPhone. What's the limitation on the iPhone? iPhones are much more like locked up. So what you can do, for example, with an Android phone, you could just connect it to your laptop and have the laptop control the uh, the phone. You can like simulate taps uh, and stuff like that. So for example, there's uh, like phone games uh, that you have to do, you know, what was it, Flappy Bird or whatever, yeah. or uh, like where basically you just need to be very skilled. You know, there's uh, relatively simply simple ways uh, to just connect them to the phone, to your phone, to your laptop, write some code that uh, automates the taps and does them in an efficient way, and you can, like, beat all those games. Like, especially if there's some sort of, uh, let's say, uh, global leaderboards, those, uh, that's how it works, right? People will just code it up, uh, have it... Uh, 
work perfectly and just beat the game. That's so but funny. that can be done on Android. So that's like, I think, fairly simple. I've not done it, but I've read a lot about how to do that kind of stuff. What about creating an Android, a simulated Android on the desktop? So you're still using your desktop code, but then you're using the simulated Android to make, to do the inputs or do the outputs, I mean. Yeah, I'm, uh, hmm. I'm not sure how that would work. Okay. Uh, have you looked more into the kind of AI stuff? Are you doing anything with, with that right now? Uh, well, do you mean the, the generation? Yeah. Yeah, so I did a little bit of that. What I tried to do was uh, more into the uh, still the food related stuff. I tried to train uh, uh, a model to kind of write uh, uh, more reviews for kind of okay restaurant reviews, let's say. Mm -hmm. So actually, last week I I, I, I said let's uh, give it a shot and uh, do it for some pictures. So I posted a picture, and basically the caption was almost a hundred percent from the, the the code. I had to kind of change a few things, but uh, which which also made me think. And a possible application would be just giving some sort of good uh, prompt or writing prompts or kind of a first version of a, uh, let's say, a, a, you know, blog post or, a, you know, review or something like that. I wonder if this could be used to generate articles about stocks. So, for instance, you could just feed it all the major head, you know, the headlines of the day and then... And then you're the, so you, you train it with all the headlines and news articles of the day. And then you write, and then you, the prompt is stocks went up today because, and you have it finished or Microsoft went up today because. Yeah, I suppose that could be done. Although, okay. The, the, you know, things like I, I'd rather not talk much about this since I work in finance, I wouldn't want to have like sort of any conflict of interest. Yeah. Right. But that's interesting I because hope that, that makes that, sense. Yeah, that uh, there's a lot of advertising on like financial news sites, and so if you're generating thousands of articles, and it would show up on SEO and and so on, so it would it would it would be interesting. I had this idea the other day that's been sort of given to me over the years, and it's separate from the kind of stuff you're doing, which I think is is, but there maybe is a connection. So, a lot of people have asked me, a do I store anywhere? my 10 ideas a day. B, do I, uh, you know, I should create an app where anybody can write their 10 ideas a day and they could either, each, each list can be either public or private and people could see other people's idea lists and uh, even an algorithm could tell you, hey, your ideas are similar to this person's ideas. Maybe there's idea sex potential. And so I was started thinking, is there potential for, a social network of sorts where I log into my account, I write my 10 ideas of the day and title it. Then I can see on my feed all the idea lists of the people I follow. Like maybe, maybe Mark Zuckerberg tracks his ideas. So I want to follow Mark Zuckerberg to see his genius ideas. Or, uh, and then I'm also alerted when I, there, there's a search function also. So if I want to see all ideas about food recipes, I see all the idea lists, you know, made over a certain time frame about food recipes, or I could search for space or business ideas or whatever. And, and so all the idea lists that have been made public by members of the network, it searches through those and I could, I could see that. Then maybe there's an AI factor where idea lists are generated, you know, combining idea lists. So there's like an, an AI generated idea sex. So I can I can say, okay, here's my idea list. I want to see what other ideas could be generated by combining it with different lists. Uh, or maybe the, the AI can suggest lists that are related to mine or build upon mine or whatever. And then other people can also see my list and then build upon it, like add more ideas or combine my ideas or with, with uh, other ideas or whatever. So I was thinking this could be an interesting social network because people could, if I make an idea list, I want my friends to see my ideas. So I could tag my friends and then it, the system sends out an email. Hey, James wants you to see his ideas of the day or, or James wants to share his ideas that he wrote about your business or whatever. But in order for people to see it, they have to log on and register for the idea list network. So it has kind of a, 
an exponential type of a network effect sort of happening. I was thinking of making this because people have asked me to do this before. And I was just thinking of new ideas with it. Like, oh, you could search for ideas and you could see other people's idea lists and you could combine idea lists and whatever. You, there's all sorts of things you could do. But I was thinking of making this and then seeing if it catches interest. If, you know, because uh, hundreds of people have asked me for something even much less than what I'm describing now. They just wanted a place to keep track of their ideas. But I'm thinking make it into a whole social network. It would be almost like an interesting kind of Facebook as opposed to a trolling kind of Facebook. So what do you, what do you think of an idea like that? Yeah, that's actually pretty interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I could see it as a, people definitely want to get inspiration, see what, see what other, how other people think. Yeah. Like all, all the time people ask me, like if I store my idea list, people ask me if they could see them. And I'm sure there will be some people who have great ideas that other people want to follow. And we could have leaderboards, like who, you know, which ideas are liked, you know, you could like an idea list. So which idea lists of the day are, have been liked the most and people could have followers who want to see their ideas always. So there could be, you could have message boards on the idea list. So people can make suggestions or comment, like, why did you have this idea? Why did you have that idea? So it could operate very much like a social network. And because I've written about it so much, and people, there's many people who do this exercise. I know because I get all the emails, you know, I know that there's some audience that would be interested in this. So this is unrelated to, of course, anything you're doing, but what do you think of working on an idea uh, on a, on a thing like this? It's, it's probably not very, it's not rocket science to implement. Like what you're doing is borderline rocket science, trying to beat the, the bot catchers. But what do you think about working on an idea like this? And then I use my platform to market it and it could potentially be a pretty huge thing. Yeah, this uh, it sounds like an, an, an interesting idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Also, then, I'm thinking uh, this is a part where this kind of, uh, like the kind of generation models that I've been working with, with would apply very well uh, because uh, it's something where you can easily take, let's say very short idea prompts and, uh, train it with, uh, you know, hundreds of thousands and then get more and more and more out of it. Oh my God. That's great. Because like, let's say my idea list is, um, well, let's say it's cooking recipes. Like here's 10 different recipes that I've never seen before that I'd be interested in making. So I'm going to make pasta mixed with tuna fish mixed with soy sauce. And the next one is I'm going to make, uh, use a burrito wrapping, but filled with sushi. And so it's all these like quirky, let's say that's my idealist of the day. And then it could use AI to find other interesting possibilities. Like here's what flavors go with tuna. Like it'll know all these things and it'll make suggestions and, or, or. Yeah, to kind of expand and augment it. Yeah. Or, I, I or would actually feel that, for example, if you had, uh, if you gave me something like a list of, uh, you know, 1000 of your ideas, I could try to uh, uh, train one of these models to actually just create more and see what it gets. And let, let's say I have 10 business ideas. It could sort of flesh out the mm -hmm. ideas. Like, let's say I'm going to start a moving company. It could, it could kind of flesh it out like, okay, you'll use bands, you'll advertise this way, you'll, you know, or, or maybe you should do moving and uh, uh, concierge services. So someone's moving from New York to Miami not only do you move them, but you could uh, set them up at a gym, uh, find the right doctors for them, by find, the, you know, look at choices for renting. I don't know. It, it could kind of flesh out idea lists even more, you know, with, with training. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's true. And, and I kind and of maybe feel it that. self-train. Like the network mm -hmm. itself can self-train as people add. So I'm going to, I want to give people the option to add to the list. So it could learn from that too, how when it sees thousands of people adding to lists, it'll learn from how people add to lists or combine lists hmm. to do like I, what I call idea sex. Like you combine two idea lists to have a combination. So like, you know, um, disco meets rap and you have the Fuji's uh, song, We Are Staying Alive in 1995, which was based on the song Staying Alive from 1978. So, you know, that that's idea sex, but it could, it could take two idea lists and kind of figure out ways to combine them using AI. I wonder if that's possible as well. Yeah, I think so. I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like the first step would be I would fully spec out what the network would look like and, you know, any feedback would be welcome. 
And then I think it probably, the basic network uh, probably is not hard to make. Like it's just a big database of users, idealists, and you know, a search function, a message board function, uh, and, and so on. So just you know, a, a feed, the ability to follow and like. So it's just like database stuff. It's nothing, nothing really difficult in that. And then there's the AI component, which makes it very interesting. Yeah, yeah, that's true. And then I build it up, and we sell it, and make money. That definitely sounds like a good idea. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So if I spec this out, would you be potentially interested? Like, look at the spec, of course, but then uh, mm -hmm. how long do you think it would take you to program, like, just the basics of, of something like this? I'm not sure in the sense that I've, I've never really built, like, a website for this kind of stuff. Yeah, and you, it would really need just the software. I mean, like, it's essentially, again, just a big database. Like, you keep track of users. Uh, for every user, they have a list of idealists. For every user, for every idea list, there's likes, follows, messages, and so on. And then there's a search function. So it's all just like, it strikes me as basic databases, nothing mm -hmm. more complicated. And then the design stuff, I could get someone else to do, like actually making it into a website. So like, have you used like Python or, or databases with like MySQL? Oh, yeah. or Python is not a problem. Yeah, yeah, Python, SQL, that's, uh, yeah, that's not a problem at all. Yeah, because that's all this is, really. And then I guess there's optimizing the databases. Python pretty good at optimizing databases, like if it's a large database. Yeah, if it's a large database, that may be an issue, but... It's probably solvable. Let me, let but me it just, depends. I'm, yeah, I'm going to Google... Yeah, yeah, sure, it depends how big things should be. Yeah, let me see. If I Google optimizing Python... Python, SQL. Uh, oh yeah, there's all sorts of things that, oh yeah, here's all, there's all sorts of stuff on Stack Overflow, which talks about optimizing mm -hmm. Python scripts that execute SQL. Um, yeah, that's interesting. Um, yeah, so, okay, so I'll send the spec out and you can decide if you want to work on this or not, but then you would get a healthy percentage of the company and and I do think I can get at the very least, thousands of users. And then if it goes viral, which I expect it could, if we build in the right components, then it becomes a sellable business. So, hmm. you know, or at least generates ads and so on. Like you could think of ads would almost work like AdSense. So if somebody's making idea lists with cooking recipes, then, you know, food companies will advertise on that page. It's just, it would work just like AdSense. Yep. So, um, so it's a pretty straightforward business model and the key is getting it to go viral. But again, a lot of the idealists are like, I make idealists for other people. And so I would always tag them to see my idealist. Yeah. And, and, you know, you could even maybe get, and you have leaderboards who brought on the most followers today and you can even give other incentives too. Like maybe you could, maybe I could split the ads with people who generate the best idealists and get and thus get the most advertising oh, yeah. on their page. Mm -hmm. So there's an, a financial incentive for people to join. Yeah, yeah, that's true. So that would definitely make people want to uh, join and write things, right? Yeah. Especially if there's a sort of incentive like this. Yeah. So I, I've just been thinking about that lately and I got excited about it. I have I have my notes upstairs for it, but I, I'll spec it out and send to you. I think I think it could be very interesting. And I think it could be actually a pretty good path towards making a million dollars because you don't even have to sell for that much to make a million dollars. And, uh, uh, you know, or maybe much more if it really goes viral. So, um, so anyway, I throw that out there. I'll spec it up and, and send it to you. But I still am excited about all the other AI stuff that you're doing in this Instagram stuff. Let, let me ask you a few questions. Like what else is going on in your life right now? Like you have a job at a bank. Yeah, yeah, I have a job, yeah. Um, and you're in London right now? I am, yeah. Uh, and um, do you work remotely at home? Yeah, yeah, at the moment I work completely remotely, yeah. Do you think your job will, return, will not be remote eventually? Yeah, I think I'll be going back. And then, um, and what else is going on? Like, uh, do you have girlfriend, married, kids? No, not at the moment. No, no, no. I, I have my freedom at the moment. Yeah, that's but, good. <laughs> uh, 
Yeah, so I think what have I been doing? A combination of this. Oh, I took uh, some of the time with uh, with lockdown to try and get in shape. Oh, good. That's important. So that, yeah, because my, my thinking was this, you know, I can either fight the lockdown and be upset that I have to stay inside and I cannot go out with friends or that, or the other approach is, you know, I made my peace with it and I knew that I wasn't going to go out and eat crap food. I wasn't going to go out and drink. So I had so much more control over, uh, let's say, yeah, would I eat and drink that uh, that I would normally have? And so I, I tried to make the most of it and being very careful, working out a lot, eating well, and uh, it's worked out pretty good. It's actually interesting to see how much control we have over our own body. Yeah, it's, it's really true. Like when the pandemic began, I realized I probably wouldn't be moving so much so I sharply reduced my diet. I basically only I started eating one meal a day because I knew I wouldn't be exercising that much. How did you stay social during uh, the lockdowns? Like, how did you? Oh well. How just, did you avoid loneliness? Oh, mainly talking with my friends. Yeah, yeah, in the phone, on the phone, texting, Skype, uh, uh, like that. Yeah. Although at the same time, I'm quite, uh, you know. Um, I don't have really a problem being on my own for like long times. I'm pretty uh, okay with it. So, you know, as a programmer myself, I mean, I used to be a, a programmer. Yeah. Uh, the more time by myself, the better. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it uh, it was especially uh, you know after the the end of the no when the first uh, kind of lockdown started. To me, it was almost okay because uh, it was so um, like soon after I had finished like my PhD that for months on end, I was just in my room writing my thesis. So I was used to staying inside doing nothing yeah, and just I, working. So it was almost no change. I forget. What was the title of your PhD? Oh, well, so my, my PhD was in uh, uh, atomic and laser physics. Uh, so I was actually studying a very... Uh, like exotic system of uh, uh, you know atoms constrained to move in two dimensions. I mean, can they realistically make a laser? <laughs> well, they the, the goal was not to make a laser. It was to kind of study the the let's say the, the ground state of the system. It was uh, a very particular type of system, but that actually, for example, could have some uh, uh, application in building uh, memories for quantum computers. Uh, well, you know, actually, that's an interesting thing. Explain what a quantum computer is for me, because the way I understand it doesn't seem to make sense. Basically, you use the fact that there's, in quantum mechanics, there could be a multiverse, and so it's computing in many universes at the same time in parallel. But that doesn't sound correct. Oh my, that uh, that sounds a very weird way to phrase it. Yes. <laughs> that's not the way I would phrase it. Uh, so I think a kind of... Uh, intuitive um, kind of explanation would, would be this. Uh, the, the standard explanation is this. You know, normal computers are based on bits. Bits are something that is zero or one, right? And then all the computations are based on that. The, the idea with the quantum computer is that the kind of fundamental unit is a qubit, okay? So a, a qubit is the... It uh, could be, well, then built in many different ways. Uh, you know, it could be a photon, it could be an atom, it could be many things. But the idea is that the, the, the states that it can be in are not constrained to being like a zero or one, okay? But it can be a zero, a one, or also what is called a superposition of zero and one, which is saying it's partly zero, partly one, okay? And... Uh, because of that, you can build a bunch of, uh, let's say, um, algorithms, for example, that, that are able to solve some problems faster than the current fastest algorithms for a classical computer. Uh, you're familiar with P and NP type of problems? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So would you say... Uh, 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 quantum computers with qubits could solve NP style problems? For instance, factoring a hundred digit number. I'm not sure actually. Yeah, so, okay, that's that's the standard example. There's a, there's something called uh, Shor's algorithm. 
uh, basically is the uh, quantum algorithm to factor numbers. And uh, instead of uh, scaling exponentially with the, let's, let's say, size of the input, that's the kind of problem you'd have with a, um, with a normal computer, it would scale in a polynomial way. So the idea is that if 100 digits would be impossible for a classical computer, it could be feasible with a, a quantum computer. And, and this has been you know, proved, the theory is there, the implementation is there. Right. The the problem is that if you want to, let's say, uh, now I cannot, I don't know the number precisely, but you need a to solve a, a problem that is actually hard for a, a classical computer. You need a quantum computer made with a lot of qubits. Okay, and the qubits are these kind of uh, fundamental units. And what what are what's roughly the algorithm? Is it possible to describe the algorithm? Oh wow, uh, but, uh, not in a in an intuitive way. What what would what would the language look like? Like what would the if then statements look like? Well, it's kind of uh, the you can build all uh, fundamental operations between bits using kind of gates. You know how even in cl classical uh, c computing, there's you know you'd have a and uh, or uh, stuff like that. And there's uh, all equivalents for uh, quantum operations. The thing is that they allow for operations that do not only affect zero and one, but also can affect the combination of zero and one. So that's sort of why there's a, what you said about the many things happening in many worlds. Like I never really even heard of that, but there's the idea that because uh, you can a basically a um, a qubit can be in zero and one at the same time. It's as if uh, you could do some computations at the same time on the zero and at the same time on the one. So uh, suppose you were to do a computation and you have to try it for zero and for one, you have to do it twice, right? Because first you do it on the zero and, for, and then you do it on the one because it could, like, the, the bit could be in two different cases, right? It could be the zero, it could be the one. So if you want to see the, all the possible outcomes, you'd have to do it twice. Right. In some way, you could think that a quantum computer could do it for both at the same time, because uh, the state could be half zero, half one. So you could see what happens to both. This is a very kind of uh, hand wavy way to say this. And I kind and of feel it... that when it comes to uh, a lot of this kind of uh, you know quantum mechanics stuff, the, the proper way to formulate everything is. Uh, highly mathematical, right? So whenever you try to make things a little bit more explainable, you're actually losing a lot on the actual value of things, on what you say. I think it's it's common in everything, right? Could it do more than on the zero one? Could it do all the sort of states in between the zero and one? So it could potentially do a million states simultaneously? Yeah, kind of, that's kind of the idea. That's That's kind of the idea. Yeah, and especially if you have uh, uh, like two com two bits, uh, a, imagine two bits, this could be in four states, right? Because each normal bit could be zero or one and then zero or one. So if you wanted to try uh, in four combinations, you'd have to run it for, run, let's say, um, a, a function four times to see all the outcomes. Uh, if you have 20 qubits, then you could do like a million, you know, two, two to yeah, the 20. Yeah, basically, something you could do two to the 20. Mm -hmm. To, this is very, it's not a precise way to phrase things, but that's, it kind of gives a gist of why some things could be faster. Not knowing anything about it, I know this is very rough, but the code be, could be something like, if number, then see if it factors into this 100-digit number, and or see if, it, see if it's a factor of this 100-digit number. The number, the result, when you say if number, it returns you know, many states instead of just one state. So I'm just trying to yeah, think how it could. code works. Even if, if at the end, you know, you, you would also want to have a, a, one answer, right? Although that's, that's also another problem with all these kind of uh, quantum states is that uh, when, um, uh, when, a state, when a state is in two uh, different states at the same time, zero and one, you know, in the end, when you do a measurement, it's going to be in either one of those. It cannot be in both. Right, but so can can it be controlled what state it ends up in? So only return the states that are prime factors. Yeah, to some extent you can. 
but in other ways, the ways uh, the way things are computed is that uh, uh, let's say the the experiment will be repeated many many times, and then you check how many times you get zero, how many times you get one, and then for that you can from that you basically can calculate uh, what was the actual uh, uh, combination of zero and one that you had. Yeah, and you could use a regular computer to kind of check the final answers. Uh, for for some things, yeah. Yeah, yeah, for some things you could. Yeah, it's kind of the idea of the you know P and MP problems, right? You could um, checking them is easy, but yeah. it's uh, solving them that it's hard. Right, like once you have the prime factors of a hundred-digit number, you just see if they multiply together to. It's form easy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, so it's interesting. Well, thank you for explaining that. These days, we're all investors, trying to be smart with our money despite our worst impulses. But at iShares, we believe that deep down inside of every investor is a better investor. One that's just waiting to be let out. Explore iShares ETFs and insights and let your best investor out. Visit iShares.com for more information. You know what I love about fantasy sports is that even though I'm not going to be a great basketball player or a baseball player or a football player or whatever, I feel like I get to participate and make decisions and use my knowledge of these different leagues to or these different sports to to compete. So it's like I can pick my team or I can pick my favorite players and I could use my knowledge to make predictions and maybe even make money. So with the basketball season here, you can now pick combo projections across football and basketball from the specials league on prize picks. This is a league created specifically for combo projections that include two or more players from different sports or leagues. Want to play alongside some of prize picks, favorite players like rapper Meek Mill and comedian Andrew Schultz, who's also been a guest on this podcast and I've been a guest on his. You can now find community plays under the promos tab of the app to view entries for some of the biggest names in the prize picks community each week. Look, prize picks even offers a reboot policy so that your entries stay in play. Even if one of your players gets injured for football and basketball games, if you have a player who exits the game in the first half and does not return in the second, that player is rebooted. Prize picks is the only daily fantasy sports platform with an injury insurance policy. What? So, I love playing it. I love anywhere where I can use analytical ability with my interests to demonstrate some skill and maybe make some money. And I like the game like aspect. I do wish they had chess as a category on prizepicks.com, but I'll set up for what they've got. Maybe I should make my own fantasy chess league. But in any case, I love prize picks. Go to prizepicks.com slash James. Use code James for a first deposit match. Up to $100. That's the easiest $100 you're ever going to make. So that's prizepicks.com slash James and use code James. Daily fantasy sports made easy. How much time per day do you have to really work on stuff? Like, you know, you work on a lot of projects like the Instagram commenter, the mm-hmm. food reviews, the uh, AI stuff? Uh, well, you know, it depends on the day, but uh, maybe I, may, I can do maybe a few hours a day, maybe two, three, depends on, uh, you know, how things are at work, how much uh, focused I am, and like that, yeah. I like the Instagram idea a lot because it's it seems like a good surefire method to build followers for people, and that's something that everyone's interested in. But it sounds like it's really hard to... Uh, beat the bot finders. I mean, the only thing I'm thinking yeah. now is getting past like an Android, you know, working on running the software on a desktop, but having it um, interact with an Android simulator. So it can't track mm-hmm. the cursor movements. It's just taps. And then it seems like it's much harder to detect. Yeah. So if that's a, a direction to go to experiment and it's easy, then I would do it. If it's hard, then I I would probably not do it. Yeah, that, that does seem a, a bit 
let's say harder. Yeah, I think that uh, what I actually uh, have been putting uh, uh, like a little bit of uh, effort in was also kind of finalizing the sort of app that I have already because that's I feel that's more kind of low hanging fruit, which is something right. that can actually you know g get uh, done without many uh, uh, like external constraints. Yeah, that that's the one where it provides. It, it shows you all the notifications. It provides prompts and you just hit a number or what, you know, whatever prompt it is. And yep. then, and then you do it. And I bet that would work for someone like me. I always do really in-depth comments. So it wouldn't really work for me unless I'm using yes. the AI component where it takes the prompt, but it's also been trained with all my books or whatever. And it writes a complicated comment and answer. That seems like a cool feature. That's the thing, right? I think it's because uh, in this case, the the app that I you know thought of, uh, the the target was not uh, let's say someone like you who really thinks through things and wants to you know uh, let's say make some sort of uh, put in effort and add value, but more of the uh, solving the problem. Oh, I know I need to interact with people. I don't really want to do it but how can I make it as quick as possible? Yeah. Right. So I actually, I tried to do some market research. Well, no, that's, uh, I tried to like contact a bunch of different people, food, Instagram people and asking them how much time they spend commenting. And uh, it, so people that are really into it, they seem to be spending uh, uh, around an hour a day just commenting. Okay. So, so, and, and essentially by a factor of four, you can improve it. So in that hour, they can get four hours worth, worth of work done using your system. Easily, easily. And also probably higher quality comments. And how hard would it be to add an AI component? I'm not sure. It depends if it had to be uh, kind of integrated or if it were done uh, outside of it. Building a database could be done like fairly well could be done because part of how I created this like through, yeah. a, uh, through a, a database doing it in real time from the iPhone that seems uh, much more complicated right, I don't because, even know if there's anything that does that because potentially I could take the caption of the post and that's the writing prompt into the AI program yep. and so that's the real time version but you can also take the prompt as just the tags. So but also I think this would be a problem, for example, in iPhones. I don't think it's possible to get, let's say, input from the screen directly. Right, but right? I'm thinking if you do it on a desktop, but then use the Android simulator to post the comment, that might be a way around using the iPhone. That is true. Although my, my idea for using the iPhone, so uh, building the iPhone app is um, gives much many more constraints than using uh, an Android app, right? But the way I've gone with that is because uh, most people would be using uh, iPhones. What if it's just desktop software? So like if I'm just commenting, I don't really need to use my phone. I can use the desktop. Yeah, no, no, that's definitely true. However, that's also what I thought about a little bit. Most people wouldn't be using their phone, like uh, especially because in my mind, I've, I've always had Instagram, right? Who, who uses their uh, laptop to comment on Instagram, to use Instagram? Almost nobody would. Everyone uses iPhones. Yeah, it's funny. I use my desktop, but I'm a unique case. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. I, I think older people <laughs> use desktop sometimes, but Instagram yeah, is limited on the desktop. Uh, yes. And, and uh, I mean, I really like the AI component of this. Also, what do you think? Of, have we talked about this before where, you know, I was thinking of the AI stuff and combining that with this NFT concept. So for instance, yep. let's say you want to make a, a, a virtual Abraham Lincoln. So let's say I want to do this and I I'll curate it, meaning I'll feed in Abraham, the, the speeches I think best represent Abraham Lincoln, the letters that he wrote that I think best represent him. And then I have an, a virtual Abraham Lincoln and I can call that an NFT and I could sell that essentially. So, or somebody else could, who's interested in stoicism could do a Marcus, a virtual Marcus Aurelius and feed in meditations and anything else, you know, and maybe feed in, 
you know, other stoic philosophers, but ultimately it's the voice of Marcus Aurelius and, you know, feed in the history of Rome, you know, I, I don't really know how, how it works in terms of how it determines the final voice it writes in, but, um, uh, you know, it seems like that's an interesting way to help people create these virtual, you know, like, let's say I wake up in the morning and I'm having problems with my girlfriend or whatever. I ask Marcus Aurelius or Abraham Lincoln for advice or Sigmund Freud for advice. And the AI yep. is trained by the, the, whoever created that Sigmund Freud is using all of Sigmund Freud's writings that he or she likes and then sells that Sigmund Freud to me as an NFT that I could ask for relationship advice, stuff like that. There might, there's all sorts of weird uses that this could be, or, or I could talk to Abraham Lincoln about the civil war and, you know, for when I'm studying for a test or whatever. So it seems like that's, and, and, and the reason why it's an interesting thing to sell is because it's proprietary. The, the, the input that was fed the, the AI to learn to be Abraham Lincoln is proprietary to the creator. Like I know what I fed it so that it, it becomes the best possible Abraham Lincoln. Yeah, yeah, as opposed to just being Abraham Lincoln as uh, accurately as possible, it will be a curated version. Yeah, it's, so it's the version I think is the most interesting. Um, mm. or, or, you know, and that gets, like Abraham Lincoln's writings are pretty public, but it gets interesting when, you know, what if I was trying to do a virtu an NFT of, you know, Joe Biden or Lady Gaga, like more contemporary figures where they have a lot of writings, but I want to, I want to really know, you know, I want the, the, the environmental Joe Biden. So all his writings about the environment or, or I want a scientist like, mm -hmm. and so I want to feed in some kind of version of all their science that's easy to understand. So he's not talking gibberish uh, that I won't understand. Mm -hmm. But like if I feed in Albert Einstein, I don't want every detail of all his papers to be fed in there, but kind of more uh, simple explanations of what he, he's talking about. So he can talk in a simple way to describe the theory of relativity or whatever. So, and that's proprietary to the creator. So the creator knows what he's feeding in to make this a simple version of Albert Einstein. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Mm. You know, like you did with Shantaram, the book Shantaram to create yep. captions that's fascinating. Like, I feel like I could have a conversation with Shantaram through, you know, through the book Shantaram, through your implementation, but I can talk to him about any subject like food or whatever. Uh, now this would be a little more complicated because Shantaram is just one book. So with Albert Einstein, I'd have to feed in all sorts of materials. I'd have to figure out what's the best way. So I'd feed in Albert Einstein's letters, but I would also feed in books that explain in simple ways, the theory of relativity. So, uh, as opposed to his original papers about the theory of relativity, which would be too complex for someone to understand. Yeah. And then someone could say the theory of relativity is, you know, as a prompt, and then the virtual Albert Einstein would answer in a simple way because of the way I've created it, like the proprietary way I've created it. Yep. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That, uh, that, that makes sense. Yeah. So I'm thinking implementation wise, uh, I wonder, yeah, the, the current models that I'm using, I wonder if it would be able to kind of uh, properly answer questions and do that kind of things, but it would be definitely worthwhile uh, trying to, to, to train on. We could start off though, where a, don't do a question, do for, formulate your question as a prompt. So like, instead of saying, yeah. what is the theory of relativity? Say the theory of relativity mm -hmm. is, and then have it fill it out the rest. Yep. Yeah. And so, you know, one way we could practice, which you, you show me a sample of, you know, you fed in skip the line and I love those responses that it came up with to different prompts. Mm -hmm. Like what if I created something that's, you know, skip the line, choose yourself and, and some other select writings of mine. And then people could buy the yep. NFT of me. If why anybody would want to do that, I don't know. But then, then they could ask questions like about business or about, you know, mm -hmm. uh, ideas or self-help or whatever. Uh, you know, or, you know, I, I used to do these Twitter Q and A's. I could feed in all the Q and A's that I've done over, I did it over a yep. six year period. And so then it even has a Q and A kind of format. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think, uh, that would be a good way to, to, to try things out. 
Yeah, where, and then I could go, you... Uh, you know, my email list is like a million people or whatever. I could then see mm -hmm. if it sells to people on my email list. Yeah, yeah. You know, I could sell for like $5. That makes more sense, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. so that could be another thing we could try. Like I always want to, you have you have these particular skills and interests. Like you're interested in AI and you're interested also in faster ways to do digital things that many people are doing, like reviews or comments on Instagram or whatever. And the combination of these two is yeah, interesting. Yeah. And also you you have an interest in kind of the, the, the GPT style of, you know, text, mm -hmm. AI and so on. So uh, I, you know, so I think, for instance, the idealist social network is one idea, making these virtual Abraham Lincolns or, or whatever is an idea and selling them as NFTs. Uh, uh, the Instagram one is still an idea, but I think it's just, it's so complicated. I, I see the low hanging fruit one. Mm -hmm. we'll, we'll, we could try out and see how that does, but I think, you know, it would have been great if it never got blocked as, you know, and just doing the whole yeah. thing by itself. That would be a home run. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, 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 I was feeling very good about it because if that ran like without problems for uh, like for months. Really? And uh, yeah, 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 maybe three or four months. I was running it every single day for maybe six hours a day. Wow. And you got up to. And then I think. A few, like maybe a month ago or something like that, I feel something their like methods uh, changed. I, I like think you're detecting... probably right though. It make it makes sense that the you know I didn't know that about captcha that it doesn't determine you know because a lot of times some of these captchas are are not a test at all. It's just like, am I a robot? No, but I guess it doesn't believe me. It just is watching how my cursor moves. Yeah, yeah. I think usually, if if they can tell from the cursors, cursor, you're not a human. You want no, you are a human. They won't even give you any test or anything, or just the click. Uh, I'm not a robot, right? Yeah. And it's when they have some sort of doubt, then then you would give the test. But that's uh, do they do captures yeah, on, just on the phone at all? I, I don't. I, I I can't remember seeing a capture on a phone. I've gotten it before. Yeah. Oh, I guess because of the training. Because you're training Tesla. Oh yeah, yeah, sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, yeah, you you're always. Uh, I think, I think Which, it's bought captcha might be by Google now. I think it was may have been yeah. acquired by Google, so I think that they just right. But I mean, there. I mean, they do it to tr to train. Yeah, when I say you know, like when you say, uh, oh, which image has a bicycle in it? It's teaching you know the automated cars. Yeah. And, yeah. So, so that could be the reason for the capture, even not even looking for a robot. It's just having you do this training over and over. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, so yeah, so it, it, it does seem like the version where it's all automated, I think you could charge for it. The version where it's lo the low hanging fruit, where you give it prompts, I think that was more of an mm -hmm. advertising model. Cause I can't, I can't see people seeing the value of it until they use it. So maybe there's a one month free trial or there's an advertising model, something mm -hmm. like that. But yeah, I agree with you. You probably should just finish that and post that and see what happens. But I'm excited if you want to work on this idea network idea or not, like I'll send you the spec and we could talk about mm -hmm. it. Uh, and then, um, and then think about this virtual person NFT type idea that we could sell virtual people and you know, mm -hmm. there's plenty of NFT exchanges we could work through and, and see if there's a market for it. And that might be interesting also. What other what other ideas have you thought about with the AI stuff? Oh, well, at the moment, mainly these, yeah. So one of the things I saw that was interesting, I think I said it in a mail uh, at some point, was uh, I saw a, mo a, a website created with uh, GPT-3 that what it does, it, it does uh, copywriting. Oh, oh I, I think it was copy.ai, right? Yep. So let me see. Uh, I'm going to start my seven-day trial. I'm going to sign in with Google. Yeah, because I know you mentioned it like many times in the podcast as kind of uh, possible ways for people to make money learning how to do copywriting. Yeah. And uh, this, this would seem, for example, a very easy, like at least uh, simple way to 
kind of get a lot of problems for, uh, you know, without putting in effort. And even if you can charge, uh, you know, very, very little for it, but you're doing it with no effort whatsoever. So uh, I'm going to pretend I'm doing copywriting about um, super brain uh, drugs. <laughs> uh, uh, let's see. If, if you take this pill, your, your brain will be 10 times smarter for 24 hours. Okay. Uh, and now I'm going to create. Okay. It's loading. Our AI can take up to 30 seconds. It says maybe I didn't, I might not have. Okay. The miracle pill will make your brain 10 times smarter than it is now for one day. Take two pills and you'll become 50 times smarter, just like Stephen Hawking's computer. So let's see. The next one is the super brain pill will make you much smarter for 24 hours. It is a little blue pill that is easy to swallow and tastes great. There are no known side effects except somewhat increased intelligence. Your IQ will be around 200 during the 24 hour period that the pill is in your body. The pill will make you really smart for a day. Not only will you do better at your job, but you'll be funnier and cuddlier too. The drug works by stimulating your brain's pleasure center. So it's absolutely addictive. When media found out about this, they started calling it the super brain pill, but that's not fair to the drug. In fact, it doesn't even make you smarter. It just makes you crave being smarter more than anything else in the universe. So this is really interesting. Super brain pills are formulated from the highest quality organic ingredients. Each serving contains 12 different herbs and natural extracts designed to boost focus, cognition, memory, mental agility, and longevity. There's a revolutionary super herb formula that will provide your brain with all of the things it needs to be at its best naturally. This is this is great. That's copy. Yeah, that's AI. very good, right? Yeah. yeah. So so yeah. So I, I I think I think something like this that has all sorts of uses, like relationship advice, or you know, Abraham Lincoln's an expert on the Civil War, so you can ask any question about mm -hmm. the Civil War, or you know, all this stuff, or you could have Martin Luther King Jr. explain racism to you. And we could create these like human, virtual humans from the past. So I could have, I could have, you know, Marcus Aurelius on my podcast. And it's a, again, it's mm -hmm. curated. So you don't know the secret sauce that makes it Marcus Aurelius. But, you know, you know, the creator could say there's hundreds of texts, including meditations by Marcus Aurelius. And, you won't be able to tell the difference between this and talking to the real Marcus Aurelius. And it might be interesting to see if those sell. And I would start with making a virtual version of me and sending it out to my email yep. list and seeing what happens. Um, or doing a podcast yeah, with yeah. it and, and selling it that way. The NFT component would make sense also if you got like, uh, what if you got, you know, Ryan Holiday to make the uh, Marcus Aurelius, right? Yeah. Then that would have a lot of uh, cloud because people would say, "Oh yeah, I want the Ryan Holiday version." Right, and we could we could probably I don't know we could probably ask Ryan to do it. I could call Ryan and ask him. Uh, mm -hmm. So so that's interesting. And then again, I will send you a spec of this idealist network, and and then maybe next time let's decide full force what to work on to actually make. Yep. A million. And it could be more than one thing. In fact, it should be more than one thing. Um, but you know, whatever it is, we could then focus on making it and then marketing it and testing it and experimenting and our plan B just in case it doesn't sell how, how we, we think it will. But, uh, so what additional skills are needed? So you're good at Python. You've used Python SQL. Uh, you, you're familiar with the APIs into GPT-2 at least. Uh, you're familiar with scraping things off of mobile apps. Uh, I guess yep. check to see if uh, if an Android simulator can has an API that you can use from the desktop. I do think you could still automate your, your, your Instagram app idea. And I'll check mm -hmm. that out a little as well. But I still, I'm still holding out hope that that's a, 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 an idea. So yeah. Yeah. Um, all right, and there's a and yeah, let's let's talk in a week. But I'll send you the spec probably tomorrow for the Idealist Network. I do think that could be a really good idea. At the very least, I think it could be easy, fairly easy to implement, and a lot of people will use it. And then the key is, we yeah. never know if it will go viral until it goes viral. 
that's the problem with social networks, but it's probably not that hard to make something, a simple version of this and, and, and see. Um, mm. and, yeah. Yeah. Right, any, anything else going on? Anything else you're, you're working on or having fun with? No, not really. I'd say not really. I think uh, the the focus has mainly being on all these kind of things and a little bit of the yeah. Uh, do you have any idea how I could try and get access to the GPT three model? Uh, because Jay, what I, what I, hmm? Jay yeah. you, you had the you, you had access to GPT three. Yeah, like I, the the issue is is that I can't share my account because it's tied to my Gmail. So like like it will like he would know my Gmail password. Ah, uh, I see. Yeah. Uh, how did you get? How did you get an ID for that? Uh, I just waited. <laughs> I signed up like like Paolo say. I signed up uh, last year or maybe a uh, little bit before, and then you know, and then um, all of a sudden I just got the email. So the the issue is one of the things that I think I get it earlier, maybe because I'm based in U U.S. and uh, okay. GPT-3 is based in U.S. as well. So I don't know if they're gonna give that, you know, or I don't know. So one of the things I had found that I actually wrote it in like the last email I, I, I sent was that I found that basically the some Reddit post uh, actually from the what seems to be the, the CTO of um, OpenAI where he was saying that uh, that if you had some sort of idea of how to use it and you emailed in directly, it may have been easier to you know to get ahead in the queue. I don't know. Do you think that would be worthwhile doing? But there would be would have to come up with some sort of kind of uh, yeah, just argument for how to properly use it. You know, here's another idea. You should find mm -hmm. a Reddit, you know, a subreddit that you like, and have the GPT two uh, write posts for this subreddit. You know, like write a, mm -hmm. you know, and see how many see how much Reddit karma you can gather uh, as an interesting experiment. Oh yeah, that's true. Sure. For instance, if there's a crypto subreddit, feed in everything you can about crypto and see if it writes intelligent enough posts that it gets a good Reddit karma uh, from writing about crypto. Because, you know, people like things like, you know, so it's not only good for Instagram followers, but you could get Reddit followers and Twitter followers and so on. So I wonder if we should broaden out how, how you're thinking about it. and. Um, because and and particularly testing on Reddit might not be so hard. Yeah, Reddit would definitely be easier since it's all uh, desktop based, and it's easier to get like scrape stuff. Yeah. So okay, let's uh, let's schedule something for next week. Um, but I might be emailing you in the next day or so about the idea list idea, and we can see if you want to work on that. Okay. Yeah, that sounds good. All right. Uh, Thanks a lot, Paul. And, and Jay, you can help schedule the next time. That's why okay. I'm here. Excellent. All right. I will talk to you guys later. Every single day on my Twitter account, follow me at Jay Altucher. I'm doing the adult improvement tip of the day. As an adult, I've become a chess master professional stand-up comedian, a computer programmer, an investor, a hedge fund manager, an entrepreneur. In some cases, I've mastered some of these new fields. It's no good to just do something mindlessly over and over and over again and not get better. You get happier when you improve. New research shows that adults can improve just as easily as kids or almost as easily. I've written books about adult improvement. I have new ideas that beat out the 10,000 hour rule. And I'm doing a whole thread every single day, one tip a day for the next 100 days, adult improvement tip of the day. Find me on Twitter at Jay Altucher. Powered by Snapdragon, the Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra elevates your photography to epic new heights. Snapdragon processors deliver a color experience like no other. With sharp, industry-leading 8K video capture, you can also snap images in 200 megapixels, capturing more detail than ever. And those late-night blurry pics are a thing of the past, thanks to next-level night mode. Experience powerfully moving premium photography only with Snapdragon. Follow us on Instagram at Snapdragon Official.